Well, hello. Welcome to Preparing to Survive and Thrive Homesteading Channel with Charlie B. So, what am I up to today? Well, today I'm going to answer that age-old question of what's for dinner. So, um, tonight I'm going to do something a little different, especially for July. But um, I'm going to do a marinated chicken, leg and thigh. And I'm also going to do something called naan. And naan is a bread from India. So, here we go. Let me bring you down to show you the ingredients and what I'm up to. Okay, so now the chicken. What are we going to marinate it in? So I came up with this recipe. Um, my daughter was talking about something called um, an Indian bread. Nanny? Something like that? I, I'm not sure, but I am going to make that too. I will find out the exact pronunciation of that word. But what I ended up with um, I pulled up a recipe for butter chicken, but I don't want to do a curry because it's kind of curry based. So what I have come up with for a marinade is I've got one cup of plain Greek, yo Greek yogurt in here. And I'm going to do three tablespoons of minced garlic. Now, the longer you can marinate this for, the better. I'm going to get to be able to marinate it for about an hour to an hour and a half before I have to put it on the grill. Maybe a little longer. I wish I would have started this earlier, but I didn't. I had other things going on. Okay, I'm also going to do two tablespoons of minced ginger. Now this I bought, it's freeze-dried. Um, I bought it at the store. I didn't do it myself. I actually probably should do some myself. I think I have a freeze dryer. Just be a little bit of time. And then I have two teaspoons of turmeric. Now I just buy this to save a lot. It's nothing fancy, but it works. Especially when I'm just using it as a marinade and cooking with it. Yep, got a little bit more there than I needed. I'm going to do some crushed red pepper seeds, and I'm just going to do one teaspoon on this. This will give the chicken a little bit of spice. Hopefully not too much. And I'm going to do two teaspoons of pepper. And you can add more or less according to your taste and two teaspoons of salt yeah, that might have been a little bit more it's so humid my salt shakers are getting a little bit damp that's all right no big deal so i'm just going to stir this up good 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 creamy of the yogurt now the lactic acid in any milk product actually helps to make your chicken more tender. And I'm going to grab this right here. I've got some chicken in here. This is still um, halfway frozen. And I'm just going to pour this over it and just let it finish thawing out in the fridge. And I'll be moving around and kind of smashing it all together. Now, I did this for actually um, eight thighs and legs. Just smear that over. Now, when I pull this out of here, I'm going to hopefully have it a little bit more dispersed evenly instead of what I have here in front of you all, so I can literally put it directly on the grill. It's July, it's very hot, and um, trying to keep the heat out of the kitchen because I have not put my window air conditioning in the kitchen as of yet this year. So, I had to change windows since I 
got a new heating system and I don't want to remove the radiators like I used to be able to do with the other ones. So I'm going to just do this. So this is going to be nice and messy. I'm going to, yep, I'm using my fingers, so hopefully it doesn't keep gross everybody out, but it's all right because it's my kitchen, my rolls, right? I'm going to flip them all over and try to get them on the other side too. Now, what I'm gonna do here to add a little bit of water to this to make it not quite so thick of a marinade, which I really don't wanna do that, I just wanna get it all over the chicken. But I could, if I wanted to thin it out, I could literally go ahead and add a little bit of water to the bowl and just pour it over that and that would help thin out the uh, marinade in order to get it everywhere. This should taste really good. Add a little kick to the chicken. We don't want boring chicken all the time, do we? I know my husband can eat chicken every day. He loves it. And I used to pretty much eat chicken every day whenever I was a bodybuilder and that seemed to be the, the protein of choice was chicken. So, how about that? So, I'll let this sit in the fridge here for a little while, and I'll come back out and check it to make sure it's still covered over. And if it slides off, then I'll go ahead and move it around and add some more. So, we'll be back in a little bit. So, now let's get to this nan. It is a type of bread. So, I know a lot of people call it nan bread, but... I will probably just refer to it as bread. Occasionally I might say nan, but it's bread. Either way you look at it. Okay, and it's from India. So the first thing we're going to do is use one fourth cup of warm water. Next item up will be one and a half teaspoons of um, active yeast or the instant rapid yeast. And I have the instant rapid yeast. Now I've had this in the freezer for a while, so I'm hoping that this will still be good. So this is one and a half teaspoon is what they're saying. There's one. And there's the half. And the next thing we want is two teaspoons of sugar. I'm just going to stir this and wait for about 10 minutes, praying that the yeast is still good. If not, I'll have to run to the store and get some different ones. So, but it's been frozen, so it should be good. And this should start to bubble in about 10 minutes, praying. Now, I always keep yeast in the refrigerator, or not the refrigerator, in the freezer in case I would need it. Um, back during the pandemic of 2020, it was very, very hard to find yeast. So I'm going to literally put, I'm just going to watch it. I'm going to put the timer on for 10 minutes just to be on the safe side. And I'll know that if the yeast is not bubbling by then, that I'll probably have to go get some different yeast because it won't be working. So, but we'll be back. All right, so it's been 10 minutes, and as you can see, we have bubbles. Okay. So that's very good. So the first thing we want to do is add three-fourths cup of warm milk. And I stuck this in the microwave for like 30 seconds just to warm it. And then we want three-fourths cup of plain Greek yogurt or any other kind of yogurt that you'd like to use. And we need one 
fourth cup of oil. I'm just using avocado oil because that's what I have on hand. And I'm going to use two teaspoons of minced garlic because I want my bread to be really garlicky. Now we're gonna leave the oil out because we're going to need it here in a few minutes. And the next item will be four cups of flour, just regular flour. I'll be back in a second, I need the flour cup. Okay, back to the flour. Here's our four cups, plus we'll need a little extra to um, put on the dough sheet so we can roll it out or knead it out, whatever you wanna call it. There's one. I always keep my flour in a Ziploc baggie and my flour container so it doesn't end up getting any of those icky things in it. I might actually have to go down and get some more flour. Okay, and there's three cups. Oh, looks like I'm going to have enough. Plus, I can make it also just kind of scrape it across and it levels out the cup. I'm going to put this back in here. I'm not going to bother closing it because I'm going to use it here in a second. I'm just going to move it out of my way though. And we need one teaspoon of baking powder. teaspoons of salt and then we're just going to mix this together and we need a half so let's get this stirred up a little bit we're going to just mix it in I just kind of slowly bring up the liquid to the top and the yogurt, the milk, and the oil. My daughter has been begging me to make this, like she's sending me recipes constantly to make this. And so I told her I'd make it, I'm not sure why, in the beginning of July when it's hot. But we're gonna try it. So yes, I'm making this for the first time in front of the camera. There we go, we're getting it all mixed in. Now, if the dough is too dry, then what we do is just add a splash of water here and there. But we're not gonna do that until after we literally make sure that everything's together and it's too dry. So now for the hands. Some people do this right on the um, dough sheet. I normally do, but for some reason I decided to do it in this mixing container. That's all right. Now, once this gets all mixed, we'll have to let it rise for about an hour. Good and sticky all over my hands. Yep, that's dough for you. Now this will actually be cooked in a iron skillet. Just slowly getting the ingredients mixed together. 
that's one nice thing. You only have to let it raise for an hour and you don't need an oven to bake it in because it's kind of more like a flatbread. Um, a pita bread is apparently thicker and denser and not as soft as this is. In my opinion, it's kind of like a skillet bread. Drop that down there. I'm going to put my containers over here. And the thing, I'm going to go ahead and get my dough. This thing is what I refer to as a dough sheet. It actually tells you how big they are, like how you can make a tart, gives you measurements, all that fun stuff. So going to take a little bit of flour and yes I'm having a nice mess cleaning it all up here in a minute I'm hoping you feel like you're at your mother's kitchen or at your grandmother's kitchens or somebody that you loved and you're actually watching them do this that is my wish so I'm just sprinkling a little bit a flower of dusting. Sprinkle it right over here. And there is my dough. I get it kneaded together better. Now, if this would start to stick to the sheet, then you'll want to just sprinkle a little bit more um, flour on it. I'm cleaning out most of this. So I'm going to say this is pretty mixed together. It feels good. And we're going to put it back in this measuring cup. Yes, it's all over my hands. But that's that's the fun about cooking. I get to make messes and I don't get in trouble for it because it's normally a good creation. And I'm going to just take a splash of my oil. That's probably a good two teaspoons. And I'm just going to kind of roll it around in here. Just kind of take it all over here. Because we don't want the dough to stick to this as it rises. So it's going to rise for about an hour. Sure, it's good and smooth. Okay, I'm going to drop this in here. I'm just going to, there's a little bit of flour that didn't get mixed in, so I'm going to go ahead and knead that in a little bit better. So that's why I checked my bread to make sure I don't have anything that didn't mix in. Since I got chunks of garlic in here, minced garlic, I might miss something. But it should all cook together very nicely. I'm going to put this right in here, and then once it's in, I'm going to pull it back out because it'll be covered with oil. And I'm just going to kind of rotate it around. And then I'm going to cover this with a dish towel, a clean dish towel, and let it sit for an hour in my nice warm kitchen. As soon as I wash my hands, that is. So I'll be back. Let's get this covered and we'll want to let it sit 
And you can also use plastic wrap to cover it, but my kitchen is very warm, so it's going to rise nicely. And we want this to pretty much double in size. So let's put this up here, so it'll be nice and warm. And we'll be back with a cleaner kitchen, I hope. So I'm out here at the grill with the chicken, and I've got some tinfoil over my grill. I've got my grill up on high, but, um, I'm going to turn it down as soon as I get these guys placed on it. Hopefully you can see these. I'll bring you down a little bit more. I'm also hoping the sound is good because my um, microphone has decided it's not going to work for me today. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So this is the leg and thigh. I'm gonna just brush this around. I'm figuring, and don't hold me to this, but I'm figuring it's going to take about 45 minutes to cook these guys at a good temperature. But I won't know because this is also the first time I decided to make this, this type of marinade. And the last time I cooked chicken thighs with a different type of marinade, it actually cooked about 45 minutes. Now, I'll keep the rest of this marinade that's in the bottom of the container, and when I flip this over, I'll go ahead and add some more to it. So, I'm going to get this shut, and I'm going to turn it down. We'll be back in a little bit. The nan's almost done rising, so we'll get to that next thing. Yes, I know I jump you around, don't I? But, this is what cooking is. Okay, so let's open up this grill. It's been about 20 minutes. Let's see what it's doing. Now I haven't flipped it yet. Mmm, looks like it's getting done. So I'm going to go get some tongs and flip this and we'll be back in a little bit. I got them flipped over, and I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more of this marinade on this side for it to cook in. Um, hopefully you can see that, and there's it's a little bit of brown on that side where the skin is crisping, and that's what we want. Very hot standing by this grill, but better outside than inside definitely getting done. It's going to be amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So I'm going to let this cook for another 20 minutes and we'll be back. Oh, let's get to the bread. Okay, as you can see, my nan um, more than doubled in size, um, in size but I, I told you the kitchen was very warm. So that's good, right? Sprinkling a little bit of dusting on there. And we're gonna get this baby out. There we go. Look at that. So I'm just going to kind of make it into a giant hamburger patty shape. And I'm going to go get my bread cutter. Well, 
this should make 10. Um, I guess we'll see. I think it's going to make a little bit more. Hmm. How do I cut this in fives to make them even? <laughs> well, let's try to get 10. Might have to just roll this up and start over. And if I had to, no biggie. I would do it. Some might be a little bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, not the neatest, but that's all right. It doesn't have to be the neatest. It just has to work, right? So after I get these guys all pulled apart, now, you know what the secret is? You don't have to have these neat. They're just 10 pieces of hunks of dough. Sometimes people get all crazy in how something looks. As long as it tastes good, a little bit of a mess can actually be forgiven. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more of the flour. We are just going to smash these guys out. I'm going to make them into kind of an oval. And then I do have my rolling pan. I'm going to dust it with a little bit of flour that I had on my hands. Let's get these guys out of the way. There we go. Now, this is going to be in a skillet. But don't freak out. They're not perfect. Okay? doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to taste good. And as long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. Go ahead and roll these guys up. Smash them out. So let me go ahead and get these finished. You know the gist of it. And we'll be back when we go to fry them up. Okay, so I got my um, skillet here, which I forgot the um, pot holder. So I'll run in and get one. But let's check to see if it is hot enough because you want to get a skillet really good and hot. Yes, it's sprinkling. I threw a little bit of water in it from a cup and it is splatting at us. So now with the nan, we're just going to put it down here and let it fry. I said to go ahead and flatten it out as it cooks to make sure it gets done all the way. You can get a better spatula than this. Here we go. Shouldn't take very long for those guys to get done. So you can see it's starting to get some bubbles right there. So hopefully the, the, the um, tree, the shape from the tree is not too bad. Just flattening it out. I'm going to actually turn up my burner a little bit more. Let's pray that that doesn't mess it up. Because sometimes I do that and it messes it up. Getting done on that side. Now when I put some oil on this, I just kind of um, coat it the skillet. And 
And if I have to, I'll add a little bit more to it. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have turned up the heat, but this is what the man looks like. And that is definitely getting um, smoky. So I turned it back down. I'm going to add a little bit more oil to it. Pull it off a little bit. And I'm going to get the rest of these guys on here. Get that. And I have these sitting on a paper towel, on a plate, and a paper towel, and a dish towel, and the paper towels that. And then I'm covering them with the dish towel to make sure they stay warm. So, I guess we can see if the second one is better. It's bubbling, coming up in bubbles inside. This is pretty cool. I've never made um, this type of bread before. definitely better to make this in the summer than it is when you're trying to cook them in the oven. Not quite done. I couldn't tell you exactly how long to leave these cooked for. This is kind of something you have to check out yourself and do. chicken's looking pretty amazing. It's actually done. So I'm going to turn it off and just leave it sit on the grill to stay warm. And the reason how I know it's done is because the bottom part of the leg is the skin is starting to come away from it. Well, there you have it. This is what's for dinner. We have our grilled chicken with its marinated and Greek yogurt and some other ingredients, lots of garlic. We have our salad with some peaches and some onion tops on it and also the nan, the nan, which is a bread from India. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste test, my favorite part. So, mmm. That's actually very good. I've never done fried pan fried bread before, and I think I'll have to do it again. Now for the chicken. Sorry, my little dog wants to eat too. Mmm, it's really good. The marinade is perfect. Well, there you have it. I answered the age old question of what's for dinner. So remember, if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Charlie B signing out. I'll be talking with you soon.